Good morning again, the great community of Be Holy, Be Perfect believers. And I just want to talk to you this morning about sins forgiven, arise, walk. Sin forgiven, arise, walk. And uh, the scripture reference is Luke 5, 17 through 25. 5, 17 through 25. We're talking in chapter Luke this morning. We'll also make reference to James chapter 5, verse 13 through 14. I said James chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. And I won't read all of this because this is going to be a short video. It's a short video as always. But I just want to bring out some key points. You can look up the scriptures and read them for yourself. I'm sure it'll do you good. And he says in uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 17, 17b is really what we're dealing with right now. And they say, and the power of the Lord was present with him to heal him. And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal him. To him who? To heal this paralyzed guy that uh, his, his buddies brought to him. And he was paralyzed. They brought him to Jesus on a stretcher. So, but well, one thing that we see here, it was some power going on. There was a power play here. And he's saying, whose power was it? It was the power of the Lord. It was the power of Adonai. The Lord, uh, word Lord there means Adonai. Adonai, which means ruler. Um, the one who governs, the uh, man with the authority. And his power was present with him to heal see it take power to be in our presence to heal us from god so the presence of the lord should be in our places of worship in our fellowship halls where people can come and be healed see they came to G jesus they came to jesus they was looking for jesus they was pushing through the crowd the word of god say they said they was pushing through the crowd and they had the man on a stretcher stretcher or a leader and they was pushing through the crowd and uh so they couldn't get through the crowd so they climbed up on the roof and let him down through the roof now we all know the, the we all know the story you know so we ain't got to go through all the 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 movement of these men these friends bringing this guy to jesus the point is that they brought him to jesus they knew who to bring him to and so when we want something from God, we got to know who to go to to go to. What I'm saying is we need to know who to go to and that who to go to is Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost to find what we need. A lot of times we go into the wrong uh, people or the wrong person to, to get what we need from God. Is God have uh, emissaries? He have disciples? He have the fivefold ministries, the teachers, preachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, uh, to elders, to uh, that are spiritual leaders that will help us when we need something from God. But the main thing is that if we are suffering, according to James five thirteen that we should pray for ourselves. So we need to learn how to pray for ourselves. But getting back to the story here, getting back to the point, the presence of the Lord, the presence of Adonai was there to heal this paralyzed man. And we see that the people brought the people to Jesus. They, they, Jesus wasn't running after them to try to get them to come to him. They when they experienced the power, they told the roof off the house to get in to see Jesus. They pushed through the crowd to get in to see Jesus. So all this running around, spending all this money, media stuff, trying to get people to come to Jesus. Hey, you can do all that, but if it ain't no power going on, the people are not going to be trying to push through to get to you. OK, they're not going to be trying to push through to get to you uh, to see the Jesus that you're talking about. So in verse 20 here in Luke chapter five, he's saying when Jesus saw their faith springing their faith, he's saying faith, he means active faith springing from confidence in him. He said, 
man, your sins are forgiven. Look, what did he say? He said, man, you paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Why are your sins are forgiven? Because of your act of faith. Because I see that you want to push and press in to me. You want to get to me and get something for me, uh, from me. And, and your actions are um, your actions are showing the kind of faith that you have. It don't have to be great faith. It just needs to be active faith. Some of us have faith, but it's not active. It's just sitting around, you know, drinking uh, Coca-Cola and drinking tea and stuff and having a conversation about some crazy stuff on TV. But these, this man had active faith. These men had faith that moved the mountain that Jesus always talked about. So let's make sure. What I'm saying is don't go to that faith robber because when you go to a faith robber, he's going to rob your faith or she's going to rob your faith. So the Bible tell us here in Luke chapter 5, verse 20, that they had active faith. Active faith, and that active faith sprung, sprung from confidence in him, in him who? In Jesus, in the power of God, in the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So these people, they were running and running, trying to get to Jesus. They was tearing off the roof, tearing, tearing off the roof of the house. They were pushing through crowds, you know, almost like a, want to be like a stampede to get to, to get to Jesus. So when we do what we're supposed to do, when we have that active faith in the power of the gospel, then we don't have to run behind people trying to get them to believe in Christ. They're going to be pushing. They're going to be tearing the roof. You're going to have to do repairs on your 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 building, on your sanctuary, because they gonna, that's how they're going to be trying to get to, because there's something going on there that they can't get from any other place. They This is, this is what Jesus had something that their people wanted, and they pressed in to get it from him. You know, but also know this in verse 22, you know, he said, but Jesus, knowing their hostile thoughts, answered them, why are you questioning these things in your heart? So just know when the truth be told, you're going to become a terrorist. You're going to be somebody that ain't going to fit in. You're, you know, they're going to be running around saying you're going to have to watch what you listening to, to the people that's trying to, to that old faith robber, I call them the faith robbers. They're going to be trying to punt. Uh, and the faith robbers and the 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 unbelief pushers, they're gonna be trying to shoot you up with all this unbelief and discouragement. So you need to be running, like you see these little guys on the video. You need to be running as fast as you can, so that they're not sticking you and shooting you up with all that unbelief. You know, and the Lord says here too, in verse twenty three, He said, "The Lord asked these guys, what is easier?" To say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk. So what is easier? <clears throat> Shall we say, uh, be thou may whole? <clears throat> Excuse me. Be thou may whole. It's the same thing as your sins are forgiven. But here we see that something is going on that uh, we don't like to talk about, that sin is related to sickness. So oh. avoid, so uh, run away from that old faith robber and uh, run on home. Go ahead on and pick up your bed and walk. Look, the Bible says here in verse 23, Jesus said, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you or to say, get up and walk. And when the man, when, when he said that, something went on in the man. There was a connection. That that man, God, he asked God for something and he had faith, expectation faith. And when he, when that expect, expectation faith reached out and touched the response that the Lord had given 
something happened. And what happened? He stood on his feet. Look, the man got up, and not only did he get up, <coughs> he got up and he took up his bed. And he picked it up and he started walking. But let me tell you something. You may not get it where you just start, get up and start running. It, you, some people do that. Some people do that. That's all right. <coughs> but you may... <clears throat> You may have to start off on crutches and drag your, your stretcher on your back like a backpack. But you're still up. You're still up off your bed. So you need to thank God. We need to thank God for the process of healing because healing is a process. Healing can be immediate. But we shouldn't give up <coughs> on God. Excuse me, y'all. We shouldn't give up on God. If it comes immediately, if it don't come immediately, we should just get the crutches, move with what we got on our faith, move what we, what we, what God is working on us. And then we'll go from walking on crutches. We'll go to a limp. It's all right to limp. You ain't on your bed. You done left your bed. Now you on your way home. He said, look, he said, pick up your bed, pick up your stretcher, pick up your leader and go home. And go home. Don't be sitting here. Don't be having no conversation with these old faith robbers. Go home. Don't be sitting around people in unbelief. Pick up your bed and go home. So the Lord, the man listened to the Lord. He as he was walking, I'm just making, I'm just saying this. As he was walking the crutches, he had threw away the crutches. Then he went to a limp. And by the time he got home, he was on his knees praising God. Because God had did something in him that nobody else could do. And God will do something in your situation that nobody else. <clears throat> now we see that, that when God moves in, sickness, disease, poverty, depression, low self-esteem. I won't say low self-esteem, you know, when we don't really have no confidence in ourselves. We don't have, we don't know who we are. We don't have to know that God wonderfully made us and that we can do all things in Christ Jesus. He formed us and made us and we are created in the image of the almighty. We are created in the image and likeness of God. So there is no reason for us to have self-esteem and low, ex low uh, self-esteem and don't have any value in ourselves. Now, how did I get on that track? Because sometimes we, 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 these things will cause us to be sick. They will cause us to lose hope. They will cause us to allow that old faith robber to come in and rob our faith and shoot up, with, shoot us up with some unbelief. So look, today decide that you're going to have active faith in God. Today decide that when God says, take up your bed and walk, whether it's a bed of uh, uh, that you're struggling, you know, with your bills, that, you know, you don't have no food, you know, just believe God. He going to send somebody with a bag of groceries. He going to send somebody. He, he going he to get it to you. He'll rain manna down from heaven, but he going to get to you. So just Hold on to the faith that you have and trust God. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. <coughs> your well-doing is active faith. Your well-doing is holding on because God is right there with you. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. <clears throat> he'll put his arms around you and he'll bring his glory to rest upon you to meet your needs. Think about what God has done for all this time since he's created the heaven and the earth and that he created man. God will do it for you. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. So just 
close your eyes.